I don't know if this camera is picking it up, but the wind is crazy awful out here. And after watching the, even though I've secured the stuff with glue, parts of the roof were kind of coming off. So I've decided to do what some of you have suggested um, previously, which is to put frond leaves here right on the roofing. I don't know if you can see all that. I can't see what I'm shooting here, but I've just started, but I'm going to continue to put some more up. Not too much because I don't want the weight to be too heavy. But what it does is it actually will help protect against UV rays from um, destroying the plastic roofing. But it'll help to kind of hold things down. So when the wind blows on it, the roofing doesn't keep flying up. At least that's the hope. We'll see what happens. I'm just going to pile them up there. And it also helps with, um, from aerial view, when the, uh, the flying men come by, it should make it a little bit uh, more blended in. I don't know if you can see this, the wind is blowing fiercely outside, but you can see the roof is no longer uh, bouncing around, and it's because I have, uh, like, uh, I don't know if you can see the shadow here, I don't know how well it's showing up, but here's to the silhouette. I have been tossing fronds on the roofing. It's making the roof heavy, so I hope it doesn't collapse when it rains because of the weight. But the fronds are helping to hold the tarp down. So it's keeping the structure actually pretty solid. By pushing the roof down on, on the building, it's actually making like even this wall a bit more sturdy. So the, everything's more sturdy because the roof is squishing down on it. So I've got a few more fronds I've got to add. And then um, what remains to be done is patch the existing holes. Then um, see how this thing withstands. See, see how fast and crazy the wind is? It's like fierce. And the structure seems to be holding now because um, the fronds are holding it in place. I'm going to be adding a couple more up here. And the fronds kind of serve two purposes. They, um, they will help to... Um, they will help to camouflage the yurt from the sky. They'll help to camouflage the yurt from the sky so when the flying men come by, hopefully it'll be harder for them to see it. They have to really, really look. The second thing is it hopefully is helping to make the structure more secure. And as you can see here, I've um, started piling up dirt along the edges. Just basically kicking up dirt and um, branches and whatnot to seal up the gap, any gap here. I plan on putting a mound of dirt all the way around the structure. That's to make the structure um, sealed on the bottom so snakes and um, our friends, the um, those guys, those armadillos, don't come through. So here you can see I'm going to need to lift this up and um, seal the unit in. But that's what that dirt is out there for us to seal the unit so there's no more gaps so that snakes and whatnot can come through. So I'm going to go through and lift up the structure and try to seal it a little bit better. But um, I've added some more beams where we had um, the roof collapsing because of water collecting. Certain spots where I knew that water was collecting, I've tried to um, put beams there now so that the water hopefully won't collect. And what remains to be seen is to look at it again when it's actually raining to see if there's additional spots that need to be braced up so that the water doesn't collect. I can already see a couple spots that might need it, like here. So I'm probably going to put another beam through here. Because it's sagging there, which means water may collect. So we don't want water collecting and um, weighing down the roof and collapsing it. I do need to add a couple more fronds on this side, but... Um, so it'll cam up, you know, the fronds actually serve three purposes. They uh, camouflage the building from the sky. They also help to block the UV rays from the sun to hopefully make the, um, the roofing portion at least last longer. That's where most of the sun's going to hit. I'm debating about putting fronds up on the sides here to help hide the structure a little bit. Um, we may do that. Some have suggested putting beams up here. I got some big ones here, but they're hard to find. But it may be worth putting additional beams on the outside or putting fronds on the outside to kind of hide the structure so it's not a big bright blue thing out here. <laughs> it totally stands out. Right now I haven't finished putting in the mosquito netting. I ran out of um, the zip tie, so I've been using um, the uh, twine here to tie everything down. I don't know if you can see all the lines there. Those are the new lines that were tied with the twine. So overall I'm pretty happy with uh, um, how stable the unit appears to be. So it's just a matter of re-securing everything. Um, 
possibly putting on some more of the um, mosquito netting. Except it's going to be a little bit harder without the, the zip ties. So I might hold off on that and just get another bag of zip ties. And um, finishing up the roofing right here. Although I'm thinking of maybe leaving it open right here and then sealing the center part. Since we're not even going traditional anymore. We're totally not looking like a yurt. I mean, we look like a yurt, but uh, this is not a yurt. <laughs> it's a yurt-like structure. So, because we're planning on putting cooking over here, possibly. We want the vent right over here. So I might just seal off that side and then um, leave this side here open. That way the smoke can blow right through here. All right. You can see this or not, but I've started to seal the interior of the yurt just by pushing dirt over the, um, you can see the little traces of the uh, tarp sticking through. But by doing this, we're trying to seal the bottom so that snakes and other creatures can't come in. I still have the rest of the yurt to do. You can see where I stopped so far right over here. We've sealed it on the inside and we're also sealing it outside like this. I haven't really staked anything down yet because I'm, I don't know if it's really going to make much difference and I'm not sure I want to go around and stake, although I may if I have time, I may stake on the inside just to help it secure a little bit more. But I think putting the dirt and sealing everything will help. Um, the fact that the roofing now has has a lot of um, fronds on it to hold down the roofing. You can see it's not flapping anymore, um, even though it's obviously crazy windy out here. The um, fronds on top there are actually helping to hold uh, the structure down. So I appreciate Doc suggesting that. Um, it's actually making it more secure. So I had thought putting the fronds up there would be a bad idea because the weight might make everything collapse. And it still might when it rains because you can see the roofing is pretty heavy now. Uh, there's a chance everything will collapse here. So I might put another support beam up over here somewhere because this side's kind of heavy. So we may put another beam up and make a wall or something. I haven't decided yet what I want to do. Maybe make a bedroom here so there might be a wall here on this side. So the yurt's going to be split in half. We're going to have this side as a little kitchenette area here. Um, so you can cook. And then this side may be the living room bedroom area. I haven't figured it out yet. I'd like to have an open design but it's looking like we may have to seal this wall in and give it another beam, some more beams here and actual wall to help hold the, um, the roofing up to make the structure a bit stronger. But this is what it's looking like so far, folks. All right, as you can see, I have uh, sealed the perimeter of the interior of the yurt with dirt. Basically, I just laid the dirt on top of the um, tarp that I had um, you can see the edge of the tarp there. I just need to finish these ends here, make them a little neater later. But for now, the bottom of the unit is sealed. I haven't done the outside yet, but doing the outside will consist of just doing this, kicking dirt up, and trying to get dirt along the edge to hold everything down. But for the most part, the yurt is sealed now on the bottom, which is good, because I'm wiped out. <laughs> And uh, this is our crazy uh, palm frond roofing here that we've got on here to kind of help disguise the place and also protect it somewhat from the um, UV rays.